Hey, this is the True Centrist Podcast. In this podcast, we take various pop culture media and discuss the underlying ethical and philosophical ideas from four distinct perspectives. From there, we will reach a compromise that we can each contribute to. Uh, and this is, you know, fun to do in such a polarized climate because it's valuable to demonstrate what a compromise is. Uh, that being said, I am Wormy. I am Blagus. I am Noku. Seven. Alrighty. In this podcast, we will be talking about the uh, Kobayashi Maru. The Kobayashi Maru is a classic example within the Star Trek universe of a no-win situation. In the original premise, it it is that you are a starship captain that receives a distress signal from the neutral zone, from a neutral ship that hit a Klingon mine, and the captain has a decision on whether or not we will be entering the neutral zone to save the ship. The ship will die if we do not save it because the Klingons will not enter the neutral zone. But if we do enter the neutral zone, it is considered a declaration of war. Uh, We, as the True Centrist Podcast, will be discussing this from a different angle. uh, And this will be from the perspective of being uh, official Starfleet policy makers for this particular kind of situation. Because it seems kind of strange that they didn't already have a uh, protocol for it. Alrighty, uh, so again, I'm I'm Wormy, and I'll start with uh, my perspective on this, and I will say that uh, we should save them. Uh, it, it's if we're on that ship, we have a moral obligation to save them. It's you know upheld within like the principles of the Federation that we like save ships that are in danger. Uh, and there's like kind of two rules at conflict right here. Like there's the don't enter the neutral zone rule, and then there's the saving ships in danger rule. Um. You know, but one of those rules has like a moral backing. It has like a a moral purpose. You know, saving ships in danger has a moral purpose, whereas not entering a neutral zone is really just based off of respecting Klingons and stuff like that, which is you know immoral. Uh, so it's important for us to follow the one rule that is the more moral rule. You know, we have this moral obligation to uphold. We have to happen to be a like source of eternal goodness. Uh, and if that means that, you know, we die in the process, at least we, you know, have a greater ideal live on. Uh, and if we declare war, um, then the war needs to happen. You know, if, if the Klingons see that we try to save someone's lives and they uh, get all mad at us and try to kill us, well, then we need to do a war on them. Because you know, that's our right to do the war. And that is my perspective. From my perspective, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. And quite frankly, this is obviously just a ploy by the imperialists in the Klingon Empire to goad us into making a political faux pas to lead to war, or at least a better negotiation spot over some disputed region. These neutral ships aren't worth the lives of the entirety of the Federation. And not only that, but this is not the time for neutrality, but it's actually the time to actually start marshalling up our forces because these fascists in the Klingon Empire are trying to do something, and we need to be ready to kick their ass and save the subjects that are clearly in peril under the Klingon Empire. Okay. Uh, so, kind of like Noku, I also think we shouldn't save them. And, you know, just like, if we were supposed to be saving them, in one way or another, we'd be getting paid to save them. You know, it's not part of our job to save them, so we shouldn't. You know? If there was uh, some overarching force to uh, push us to save them, kind of like the free market does with businesses, then uh, there would be some kind of investment in this to uh, get us to save them. The fact that there isn't clearly means that, well, it's just better as a whole to not go in and save them, you know? And just, it, it's just such a poor idea, because interfering in this has the chance to start a potentially devastating war that could cost countless lives and, you know, countless people their livelihoods. So, you know, in in order to protect the uh, interests of the rest of the Federation, we need to leave these people to their fates. Just not worth it to save them. Okay. Uh, that's crazy, first off. It's goofy of you. There are plenty of things where they needed to market until it actually started working for it. Second off, um, I think 
this whole neutral zone is just kind of not on the bowl. They don't even work. The the other side that is there doesn't even um, fly to it because the ship got hit by a mine they put in there. And if they're not going to follow the rules, why should we follow the rules? So just go in. Alrighty. Uh, so yeah, now we're going to discuss, uh, you know, argue it. Argue what you should do. Um, let's start with, um, I don't know, go going down each one of them. I agree. I agree with uh, Noku here. But the Klingons are bad. We do got to do war on Klingons. So um, you're right about that thing. Uh, the thing is that you're not right about is that we, we need to not save them. That's that's our moral obligation. We got to save them. We need to, we need to well, I'm not going to be in the ship anyway, so it's not a huge deal if, like, you know, the ship goes down trying to save them. But we have to we have to put that austerity out. You know, we have to show that image of us being very caring. If we don't, then we're just, we're the bad guys. Um, and, you know, we can't just go right into war with the Klingons. I mean, we could, but it'd be, it'd be you know, I think garner more support if we, uh, they're aggressing against us for, you know, doing the right thing. Uh, as for, uh, not paying you guys uh, for Seven's point. That's a. I don't know. I can't really argue with that. That's fair. Um, so I. People so I, that are going in. The people that are going in. Aren't they working for the Federation? Aren't they getting paid regardless? And plus, won't they get extra for hazard pay for going into the neutral zone? Oh, I don't think I we mean, do hazard. I mean, pay. If, if we're if we're taking the Star Trek universe as literal as the Star Trek universe it is, I don't think they actually have money. It's very unclear if they have money or not, because they ha they do have money in the universe, and they're and they do use it, but they're always like, oh, we are post scarcity in the Federation, but it's like, okay, but what about all those gold press Latinum we always hear about? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I would assume that so, they, they, they're still they're still in the economy though. Yeah, but if the, uh, it kind of makes sense if you think about it, they're so prosperous because they kind of gave it up on the idea of money. So yeah. There's still money, but but it, but there still is money in the universe that they do engage in, occasionally, depending on the universe, or depending on the series. I don't remember. This one's from the movie The Genghis, the 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 second movie, Genghis Khan, the Wrath of Genghis Khan. So I, I don't know what the canon in, is within that movie, but um. No, I mean, uh, canon, I, I mean the canon. The canon's always re retroactive. There's only there's only one canon. I mean, there's actually two canons, but that's a different story. Oh my god. Okay. My my point is, Seven's correct. If if we're not paying them or compensating them or making an explicit rule or something, then they you know Seven shouldn't have to work through you know put their crew at risk or have anyone put their crew at risk. Which is why we should be passing two laws. I think you know passing two kind of amendments. First of all, I mean, I guess raising their pay so that they do do stuff or giving them money so that. Seven is obligated to save innocent lives, and also just to say, like, if you're in this very particular situation, you know, go to war with the Klingons and save the lives of people. So that's that's my thing. And uh, as for playing, is yeah, no, you're right. Like, fuck Klingons. That's what I heard. I agree. I, I have something else to say. I think. Um... I think this new trap, this neutral zone, wasn't really thought up right when they made it. They just kind of feels like it's really thrown together. And if these rules aren't clear and someone's lives are in danger, the rules just go and get those people out of there. Pe human lives are more important than these space borders that no one's even really paying attention to. Yeah, that's fair. That, that's fair. I mean. But you did mention something, uh, something that um, Noku mentioned, something about this being an imperialist plot. That's a. I want to hear a little bit more about that, about that crazy conspiracy. What's the imperialist plot? Which part? No, Noku said that this is an imperial plot to uh, lure us into starting war with the Klingons. Well, I just wanted to point out that you guys are really not really appreciating the fact that uh, you say that we have to go in there to save the lives because this is an imaginary space border. Yeah. But this is a declaration of war. Entering there in there is a declaration of war. There's no, you know, murmuring on about it. You go in there 
we have to be prepared to kick some ass. And quite frankly, the Klingons, their entire civilization is based around kicking ass and taking names. I mean, for God's sakes, they uh, they, they kill each other just to become leaders in their society. So they're probably more. They're probably more. Okay. They're probably more uh, ready at a moment's notice to prepare a war. In fact, they're probably drafting up plans right now, just as we're speaking. And so, if, if a if a ship hits a, a Klingon mine in the neutral zone, the Klingons might not even check to see what kind of ship it was. They're probably just assume it was a scout ship or a uh, imposter or something. Something that uh, they'll be able to say, hey, these Federation scumbags are trying to pull a sneaky one on us because they have no honor, and then they'll they'll try to attack us. So if, if something happens in the neutral zone, we have to bolster up. We have to do some brinkmanship. Okay, that, that's I fair. Think, I think something else. I think these, uh, these space borders are kind of stupid. If we're gonna go in, if we if we're gonna have to prepare for war, what we could do is at least uh, record what's going on as it's going on. So if they try to say you violated the neutral zone to attack us, we could say nah, we did it for this reason. And then we'd also tell them get your minds out of the neutral zone. It's a neutral zone, not a this is our mind zone. It's not your border. It's a shared neutral border that neither of us go into. So stop going into it. I mean, technically, they aren't going into it. They're just launching debris into it. How do you which know? Which is kind of different. If they're, if, they're plant, if they're planting mines in the neutral zone, it, seems, it makes more sense that they're just going in and then planting mines in. I mean, they because could just be... Think about it, like, no, you can't just launch something in there because of how space works. It would keep moving once you launch it. So that would be unless them launching a, mines into Unless it had a retro... Yeah. A what's the word? A retro rocket attached to it? Yeah, that like it could it use to. Down. Yeah, like it, is it a retro? It is in fact very easy just to just, just. Yes, it's not like that's so difficult. Can, we have can, retro rockets on satellites nowadays. Yeah, what, like you can I'm launch saying, them. Do we, do we know what these mines are actually? Do we know their their makeup, or are you just assuming? Oh no, they took care of it. Because I think a you're war, just assuming they went in there and planted them. Because that's the that's the more obvious answer. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. No, it's it a is. hell of a lot easier to launch a satellite into a place than it is to launch a ship full of people. So, okay. I, I don't see why that wouldn't be the same for other non-living things like mines. That's they're true. small, they're compact, they only need a tiny little rocket to well, stabilize their position as opposed to an entire life support system. Zone. And technically... If you have some I mean, automated... Nobody's supposed some, to be going listen, in listen, there. Listen, listen, let me speak. If you have some automated system, you launch it in, and it has rockets, and then it knows when to stop. That just sounds like an automated ship that can explode really good, meaning they're bringing ships into the neutral zone. I mean... I, what I you're think... saying is we should probably go in there and just kick their ass, like, just go to I'm war with the Klingons. go in there and save those people, and then leave. I, okay, this whole nonsense about saving people. I mean, this is this seems like like virtue signaling. We have to <laughs> no. we have to think about the greater good. <laughs> Not leaving people to die in the horrible vacuum of space. What a fucking pansy virtue signaling you are. Pansy, wanting people to not suffocate and have their eyes pop out from reverse pressure. I'm okay with uh, I'm okay with going to war. I'll, I'll put that out there. I'm okay with putting the, the war, and I am also willing to accept Seven's point that maybe they didn't break the rules, which uh, just means that we need to make more rules, um, and we just need to make them without the Klingon's input, because they're going to try to game it, apparently. You know, we just need to just do whatever we think is right, uh, and just go full on in and just, nope, you guys can't do this. You guys can't have mines in there retroactively punish them for putting mines in there. Uh I don't know, but I do I do think maybe there's like Klingons like lurking about, like looking for this to happen. Maybe. But who knows? Possible. Okay. Here's another idea. How about we go with Blangus's idea and get rid of the neutral zone entirely? But and you know like just like get rid of all of the barriers so that, you know, trade can freely 
trade, people, goods, all that can freely flow between the Federation and the Klingon Empire. You know, so, just tear down all those barriers to trade and just let let the free market do what it will. Maybe you want blood wine, but I don't. The reason you're doing it is you like the market, but the reason I'm doing it is because I think these these space borders are just kind of stupid. Yeah, I think borders are stupid. That's why we should just get rid of all of them. Borders were defined by good, honest warfare. You you are ignoring uh, the lives that have been lost on our side by just saying that oh the Klingons aren't that bad. They're 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 actually really good guys. Their blood wine is super great and tastes good. We should trade their blood wine for our gold pressed latinum. Well, I I don't think that's a bad thing. I think blood wine's okay, but. I think the only issue with these borders is that the Klingons had any hand in making them. You know, if it was simply up to the Federation to make up all these borders and, you know, we just use our force to enforce them on the Klingons and they really had no say, then I think these borders would be okay. I think they'd be legitimate. But the fact that we had to compromise with these bloodthirsty, you know, fiends is, is the reason why these borders may need to be redrawn. Um, but also, it's okay if we break the rules now, even though the rules are not rewritten as they should be, because it's for a good purpose, which is saving lives. And uh, that's something that I am willing, that's a, that's a principle that I'm willing to put, not my life, but the lives of other people on. You know, I'm willing to risk their lives. So the entire Federation, the lives of billions of people, over oh. what, 20, 30 people, some foolishness over, like that? Over a principle. Can't put a price on that. I can. I can't. What's your price? I most certainly can. Uh, probably, about? you know, uh, it's called Ulterian Calculus. You wouldn't know, Mr. Algebra. Uh, I didn't get to Algebra either, but. Utilitarian thanks. Calculus. Well. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's just called Basic Economics, but. Okay, I don't so think we should be trading lives for money. I don't think these the good, honest warfare these borders were settled upon. Warfare is hell, and it's not good. And I think in space we should realize warfare is even worse. Because let's say some of that debris gets around the planet. Now you can no longer launch things into space. Now you're prisoners of a planet. That stinks. Warfare I'm is sure they can. I'm yeah. sure they can solve that issue. Yeah, like, if we could do space travel and stuff, I think that we could, like, knock out debris. But that's just... If the standard uh, speed of a ship is, like, warp 4, and uh, warp 1 is light speed, I'm sure they can deal with uh, uh, space debris. But honestly, your whole idea that, you know, oh, these, these are imaginary borders. You know, it, it, they're not imaginary, though. These Klingons, they are imaginary. they're greedy, they're imperialist, and they want more of our land and we can't let them have it right that's why we need yeah so i i agree completely with blangus that we need to just destroy all klingons and just completely no, take all their no. land yeah, and salt and salt their klingons farmland existing. no not, don't salt the farmland government existing what i'm fine with klingons existing i just don't like their idea of oh we should just kill everything that's it I think Klingons are perfectly fine, and aren't there many Klingons in the Federation? Uh, so I, I guess uh, I don't know if you want this in, in the podcast, but just yeah, so you know, okay. Basically, in ten to twenty years, uh, or ten to a hundred years, I should say, uh, the Romulans attack the Klingons. The Federation helps the Klingons, and the Klingons and the Federation become, like, a military alliance of equivalent to, like, France and Britain. So, like, they be they legitimately become friends. I, 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 in all honesty, that's, uh... There is an objectively right answer under this context. But we don't know of that context, speaking from, like, our position right now, I guess. You could say. Okay. So the important thing is that, like, as of right now, Klingons and Federation are separated. Right. Yeah, I, I, like, like, so this happened in the Wrath of Khan, and like yeah. five movies that happens. Okay, so like, so at least for that's that's a good thing to kind of outline. So at least currently, there is no real relationship with the Klingons, and no real foreseeable future of us integrating with the Klingons, right? Yeah, no. Okay. 
Yeah, so so Bling, it's you're right. You're you're right that we should just exterminate all the Klingons. You know, I right? said the opposite of that. I said they can exist. I said I, I'm fine with Klingons. Right, they can they can cool. they can exist in work camps. Eat. I agree, Bling. Guess what? They have a use. No. God damn it. Where me, you bloodthirsty <laughs> monster? In free society. I I didn't say it. I Bling has said it, and Bling is you know I gotta respect you. You, you have some you really strong we opinion. Could, uh, we could appreciate some of uh, their ways of life in uh, the Federation. Let's say, for example, you have a boss that really sucks, but you have a Klingon that actually knows how to run things. He challenges him to combat, he kills your boss, and he takes over, and he's cooler. I am perfectly fine with that aspect of Klingon culture. That's fucking cool. I think that See, is... But I'm not. And what do you mean you're not? It's part of the free market when you say... <laughs> No, but it's not it's even free market because it means there, that schools are now legal, which means if your boss cannot survive in the market of hand to hand combat, that he now has to participate <laughs> in the market of grade building. Okay? That's See, how it goes. Okay, but here's the problem with that because that's starting to incentivize people to uh, diversify instead of specialize, and that's bad for economies. The um, better an is economy really is, the more specialized its people will be. That's just kind of a fact. Uh, so, you know, incentivizing people to branch out beyond their chosen specialization and also have to be proficient in, like, hand-to-hand -hand combat and such just means that they can't be as specialized in the thing they should be specializing in. And then they aren't as good a cog in the machine of the economy. So that's bad. Also, everyone... just being able to murder people without any consequences, that's also pretty bad because, you know, you're uh, potentially well, taking well, important, well, valuable people out of the economy and preventing them from contributing more. Like, I don't know about yeah, but you, but I like living people. Worker. You're replacing well, them with a more competent and more... No, you're replacing body. them you're replacing them with a better fighter, not a more competent anything. Just Top because fighter, I can so. kill something yeah, you, you, doesn't you know, mean I am better at its job. I think a lot of Klingons probably know economics way better than a lot of people who are in the Federation right now. And I think seeing them get their face broken in onto a table would be very fun to watch. And I think it'd be very satisfying to see my my ex-boss, who sucks, uh, get waffle stomped. I'd, I'd like to see more space coming in, okay? I mean, look, That's Blank what I have to say. Look, Blangus, none of us are here are criticizing your bloodthirst and your willingness to I show... Am. Oh, I'm certainly you not. know hurt this towards people who but deserve it. But the fact of the matter is, you think that Klingon economists are better than Federation economists? The Klingons literally are a feudalist society. Is that a good thing? I mean, they, I mean, it's not a no. good thing, but that, that means they're primitive in, economically speaking. Hey, it's seven. You should love that because that means they're even more free market. Not paying your workers, feudalist society where they have to live on private land. How is that not a thing? You well, because feudalist societies don't generally have the large interconnected trade networks that allow for the free movement of goods and services. A feudalist society will generally be locked regionally, which yes, is so bad okay. for just bad for, you know, large scale trading networks, which are good for economies. If it's space feudalism, that means they're doing more than just big making crops now. That means they're they're making, making space all space crops gadgets. They're making so? all the things that a, that a modern society, that a modern space society would be making, and on top of that, the Klingons who are running it would be the ones organizing all that trade. So really, this means more productivity of workers. I mean, I don't agree with any of this, but I think you would see the, the value in that, at least. Well, no, because you're ignoring the simple fact that the free movement of goods and services is what makes the free market. If you can't freely move goods and services around you aren't following the will of the free market you're following the will of, of a handful of authoritarian dictators and that is something i cannot agree with wait wait oh, seven you said that like it's a bad thing what's uh <laughs> like so so i dictators is a strong word but like let's say we have a bunch of people who are really good at, at economics who are in charge and they just get to be in charge of everything and you know they can really just control how the economy works entirely how would that be bad if they were really good at economics? Like, I don't know, me? I'm pretty well, good here's, at economics. Well, here's the thing, Wormy. If they were actually really good at this kind of thing, they wouldn't need a government to prop them up. They would just be in charge. 
Well, yeah, because the forces of the free market would recognize their superiority. But sometimes you got people like the Klingons. They're kind of jerks. You know, I don't think they're recognizing the, anything. Exactly. They are perverting the will of the free market. Right. So we need a strong government to stomp them down. Just no. Like no. Just like, you know, wipe all out. <laughs> Strong, strong government will also pervert the will of the free market, though. But seven, the Klingons are going to come in here and slaughter our cattle, take our land, rape our women, and you know do whatever they want. You know they're they're bad hombres, okay? That's bad for the free I market. Mean, yes, but I I object to your terms of good and bad. Good and bad don't really exist. Everything is just different shades of green. And the more green you have, <laughs> the more right okay, you okay. are. Okay, okay. Look, I, I disagree green. with the entire principle of how green it is, but think about this. Wouldn't people be more happy and productive if Klingons aren't their slave masters? Oh, actually, they're um... not your slave masters. They're your boss. They only challenge the higher ups in in hand. Okay, look. Do you know what a feudal society Boy. is? Uh, the the lower class in this situation are literal slaves. I mean. If they're well, in this, I'm pretty sure I'm the one who devised it when I talk about Klingons killing their bosses. It's it's a it's a normal market where just what happens is if your boss sucks, you have a let's say you have a Klingon that's more, uh, he's able to handle the job better. He's smarter than your boss, and he's stronger too. He could then take out a little dagger, you know, go up behind the boss and say, "Challenge me to a duel." Boss freaks out. He stabs him in the throat. Now you have a new boss who's smarter, stronger. He's more capable in combat, and he can make better businesses. Okay, when the Klingons come over here and take our land, they're not going to integrate in society and work with us. They're going to take our jobs. They're going to take our bosses by force, and they're going to take and they're going to make us slaves. There are plenty of awesome Klingons that are already in the Federation. No, there's not. No, 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 it's not yet. Not there, yet. There will be in like five movies, but we're not there yet. Oh, okay. There's not one. Not nope. a one. Nope. Okay, how about this? They could be. We could let oh. them in. We could let some in. I think borders are stupid. I think all the ones that would want to come in would come in. And I think a lot of them would settle down. They'd be like, hmm, this is a nice society. And they'd participate. Spy on us. But if there's a full-scale, if there's a full-scale militarized invasion, which I don't think would happen, then yeah, obviously we would have to respond. If they're sending in warships to our planets and firing on us, then yeah, our military would have to respond. But if they're just sending in little small ships of like visitors or immigrants who want to come in, see the sites, then yeah, it's perfectly fine. We should allow them in. So I think we've gotten pretty far vein, off topic. In the but... same vein, I think we should be able to go in to the neutral zone and save those people's lives. Oh yeah, that's what we're talking about. This thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the the neutral zone. Um, Klingons are jerks. Uh, but uh, yeah. How are we get, how are we gonna protect these people? That's a it's a good point. I mean, there's an established treaty saying we shouldn't go in there. So you know, clearly it's not our job to save them. The treaty is bullshit, though. Yeah, it, it was. Doesn't you're matter. right. It, it is bullshit. It was written in blood, and we should respect those whose blood it was written of. No. We should go in and save those lives. Yeah, that saving lives is good. Yeah, and cause the, and, and cause the deaths of, of millions of more. Genius idea. This you 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 two have learned nothing. Well, it's okay though, because we'd be doing it in a war. We'd be doing a war, and like that's good. Yeah, but we're not ready, and the Klingons are. See, war is actually kind of a tricky thing when it comes to economies, because on the one hand. It can stimulate productivity, but if it gets to the point where it's actively destroying infrastructure, it's going to do a lot more damage than good. Here. Okay, um, well, uh, Seven, since you're clearly a Ferengi, according to your holy book, Rule 35, war is good for business. It is good for business. Oh, as long good. as it's your home world that's not getting caught up in it. I have, in I have that case, then Rule 34 okay. states that peace is good for business. Oh, okay. Also very true, yes. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, let, let, Bling, is what, you got something to say, though. What I would say was Noku is coming after me and warning me, saying, we learned nothing. But let me tell you, if we learn nothing, we still learn more than you, because during this conversation, we've sl I've been getting you to unlearn your prejudices on the Klingons, so you would realize... Oh, no, I haven't. Are you kidding me? 
They're I'm animals that are trying to enslave us. So how is that unlearning my prejudice against them? That is absolute foolishness. There's still progress. Before you said you wanted to kill them all, and now you're just saying we should kill them if they come over. No, Wormy said that he we should exterminate them. I said we should go over there and kick their ass. I I did say we should kill them all, and I'm still for that. Like, what? It, okay, so we are making policy now, right? Like, we're not currently in a situation where we're uh, having to save this. Kobayashi Maru ship immediately. I'm assuming this is a, I'm what? assuming this is a situation where we found out that there were Klingon mines and now we're discussing a hypothetical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why don't we just turn ourselves into a militarized society currently? Like just as of right now. Just militarize the shit out of ourselves and just go in and invade the Klingons. Just before any of this even happens. I, was, I can agree on the whole start militarizing bit, but the preemptive assault, uh, you lost me there. Okay, so you're saying we should save the Kobayashi Maru by just attacking now? Yeah, like just making sure there aren't Klingons to ever have this dilemma with. I don't know, I, I haven't thought about it like this. This is truly enlightening. Thank you. And I think Blankus would agree that, you know, we could integrate them into our society. Like, sort of. Yes. Not through slavery. And not oh, we're not going to enslave them. We're not Klingons, for God's sake. No, we just kill them. I mean, and then that's not integration. Well, we... it's disintegration. It's burning them alive and killing them. It's not cool. would burn them alive. Like that would be kind of unnecessary. You just need to like punch a hole through like their ships, and they would get sucked I don't out. Don't appreciate any of this. You and I think. I think you guys are being a little bit creepy. I think these Klingons are fine. I think all these other alien species are awesome. I think they could contribute a lot to the Federation, and they do. Federation isn't just <laughs> so, so much a species. Well, you guys the Klingons. Horrible. The Klingons, if they came into the Empire, I mean the Federation, they would be perfectly upstanding people. They'd come no, in, they wouldn't. they'd get jobs, raise families, and they'd be amazing. They would spy on us and look for weaknesses. Okay, okay, you say that. And they would contribute to the economy. Exactly. They they'd get jobs to contribute to the economy. They kill okay. CEOs, and it would be awesome. Okay, uh, so they would okay. kill they would kill, I... the, they would kill CEOs. They so I think we're kind of shifting to a point of where it's less about uh saving the ship and now we're talking about um how how I, I, policy. I said the War policy and also Klingon policy. Okay, here's my war policy. We have a stark defense, we have a nice, awesome defense, and then we don't declare wars on people. And then here's my Klingon uh, policy. They are good people, and I think they should be allowed in. I don't think, like, I don't think all of them are good people, because I don't think all of one group is good. But there are definitely some good Klingons out there that if they settle down, they'd probably love their life in the Federation. And we would love to have them here. We'd love to see their culture. Someone else go now. State your two policies. So, uh... I, I agree. We should also build up our military, uh, but not attack. You know, a big, bloated military with uh, lots of equipment that constantly needs to be replaced. Now that, that's good for an economy. Uh... And as far as Klingons go, yeah, let's just start freely trading with them, you know? Borders are stupid and slow down the economy. See, just get rid of it yes. all. Okay, now Noku or Worm, one of you go. My, uh, my border policy is that obviously there needs to be a strong border because, you know, those Klingons are greedy and will take our land. And uh, for my war policy, well, we need to uh, build up our military because, quite frankly, there's going to be a war soon, and I would rather be on the winning side. Well, that's fair. I, I think I also agree with Seven and at least, you know, Doku and that we need a bigger bigger military. Just, uh, it's good. Build up our military, maybe defensively. I, I, I like Noku's idea. Not Noku's idea. I like Seven's idea better about kind of having a bunch of big, expensive equipment that needs to be replaced and stuff often. Like, that is good for the economy, and also, you know, it just means that we are always on the cutting edge of uh, the killing people business. Uh, the next thing is Klingons. They're bad. Uh, I don't like them. But, um, 
CEOs is a uh, I wouldn't mind having the CEOs killed. Um, maybe uh, take even a few Klingons into our government, and um, you know, under our firm hand, they would be in charge of companies. Um, because like if they're really good at doing murder, like I don't know, like the Klingons are, I do think that he would be good businessmen. Uh. So I think that's kind of readily available, but we, you know, we just kind of subjugate them to just being like the head head of businesses and doing all the nasty capitalist stuff that they are good at doing. Um, but I don't want them like integrating with us like otherwise. So we need to take like we need to show them our force by murdering a lot of them and uh, expanding our borders, and then we just you know they'll be too scared to go to war with us. Which is that's my thing. I think that's my two policies. I think we should probably start uh, heading towards the compromise phase. Compromise? Oh, I mean, are we going to compromise? So, I feel like uh, we should just get rid of one of us. I think we'll be fine, honestly. Saving these people is a top priority. I think, Wormy, you agree, right? That saving these yeah, people saving them. Saving them is a moral seven, good. Seven, you agree that um, you agree that these, these borders are just kind of BS. And would you be okay with a uh, a service where you could have people near the neutral zone going in to save people if their ship gets hit by a mine or something like that, you know? Would you agree? If there was a market for that, do you think it'd be fine? Isn't, though, and that's the problem. Okay, but now, here's, here's, here's this another is, suggestion, market, though. Let's say this is where they realize the market could be a thing. Okay. Um, that's a completely hypothetical thing, though, so it's kind of irrelevant to this. Now, here's my suggestion for a compromise. I don't think we should go in, and I believe Noku is also very much against going in to save them. But you two want to do something. But Noku's a so, sociopath. How about this? I'm thinking about, about the about... needs of the money, damn it. Let him speak! How about this? So, the Klingons have been launching mines in. Now, they haven't been sending people in, so we shouldn't do that either. But, you know, there's probably a loophole in the contract saying you can launch stuff in there. So what if... Uh, Instead of, you know, sending in our whole ships or that, we say, let them shoot in, like, I don't know, life pods, whatever they're called, escape pod type things. Okay. So, you know, things like that. You know, just, we, we can launch stuff in there, kind of like the Klingons have been doing. And then, you know, once they get out of the neutral zone, then we can pick them up and we can charge them for all the stuff we launched in to help them get out. How about this? That's a, actually a good idea. And... If if the mines that are technically ships, like satellites, if we could, what if we send in life pods, control them remotely to push the ship back into our space? Yeah, whatever, whatever is necessary. I think that's a. I that think that's way, actually a really solid compromise. And we're still saving the people. And yeah, you heartless bastards! If you want to charge these people, you just save from certain death. Go ahead, but you're not going to kill them if they refuse to pay, right? You're not going to be like, oh well. Because you didn't pay, it cost I mean, money, you know. Why would you kill them? Out? Yeah, you could just put them into forced labor camps, <laughs> like we agreed on last time. That's what, that's what I was, yeah, I was about to say. Like, are, are we drafting them, or is he going full gulag here? <laughs> no, not gulag, because it'll be privatized. Remember? Uh, it's, uh... He wants the he wants this, the ship of civilians to like work as the crew for free for like five months to pay back for almost dying. Yeah, so, instead of them dying, I'm fine with this uh, moral compromise, but. I think that also, but my thing is, if this happens, I think we should try to get a little bit more from it. You know, we should say, "Hey, Klingons, you you bastards, you caused this, and we had to fix it." I think we should escalate a disputed region and demand uh, land from them. I agree. I think the Klingons having less land is better for us, um, and we would take some of the Klingons and be like, "Hey, by the way." You're probably good at business because you're good at like fighting, so you could be in charge of some things. And just like, ooh, I, great idea. How about like we have them be in charge of the people that we save? Like they don't have to be like on a ship necessarily. Like let's say they mine space rocks or some shit like that. So like as a t trial run for the Klingons and how they would interact in our society, we let the Klingons be in charge of like those people that we just saved working off their debt. I think it's a good idea. Saving these people is good. And if uh, 
if you're going to be all heartless about it. I think there are plenty of people who would be willing to start a fundraiser to pay them off. So in the end, the people get saved, the people who saved them get paid, and the neutral zone is just kind of treated like like it's garbage and it's nothing, like it always was. So I think that's a good compromise. Uh, I don't know if that's, yeah. that's exactly, I don't think that's exactly what we're saying. We're, we're, we're trying to take a little bit from the clan. Re- yeah. Renegotiate so I, something, like either, either like a better it, trade uh, deal... Or maybe a little bit of land or mineral rights or something. I mean, I mean, if, if these bastards are just mining up the field and hurting people, they should be punished for it. Okay, so it seems to me like the compromise is we do what we can to save the people in the ship without ever sending people into the neutral zone. Only ever sending stuff in to try and get them out. Uh, and then, you know, we ask for compensation from the people we've saved. And then we use an incident like this as a way to... Uh, renegotiate or extort something from the Klingons. And we build up a bigger military so that when we get to this kind of situation we're uh, ready to push them. Sounds good. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with that. I mean, it's... Uh... Yeah, the Klingons are bad. I mean, I'm, I'm still, I still would be a little bit in favor of maybe doing a little bit of war against the Klingons. Um, we don't have to. But we could. I mean, I guess if we really wanted to, we could demand quite a bit from them, so we would have to at least do a little skirmish for as a treat. The most we could honestly demand is, take your minds out of the neutral zone so this doesn't happen again. That way, we don't have to go in, and you don't have to go in. Well, no, 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 we want them to have uh, minds so this does happen again, so we can keep saving people and demanding more from them. Ooh, actually, that's a good idea, though. What if we started putting minds in a neutral zone, but, like, mark them as Klingon minds? No, this is bad. You're gonna start. That's gonna start a real war. What are you talking no, no. about? Oh, no, okay. If, if the Klingons it. catch us, we'll say, "Hey, don't worry, we got you covered." You know, you, you missed a spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, like they're playing dirty. We gotta play dirty a little okay, bit. So what, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be shooting our own minds into there with the with the with the, with the retrograde. That way, we're just shooting it in, and then it burns off, so it stays in place. I think that's going to be terrible, because you know what they're going to do? They're going to say, they're putting mines in the neutral zone. War! You see? We'll we'll have built up our military a little bit. I mean... Exactly. If we build up the military first, then we can drop the mines in. And if they try to start something, we're ready for them. Although, hopefully they don't do that, because that might be bad for the economy. I mean, the 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 ideal thing is that we wanna we wanna go to war with the Klingons and kick their asses. I think. Um, so I mean, we're not really, but I want I thought... their stuff because they're they're mean and bad, and they have slaves, and we should free their slaves and take their other stuff. <laughs> oh, kind of cringe. I feel like we've gotten a bit off topic here. I mean, we we've already done the we've already done the compromise. I mean, I think it's already pretty yeah. set. Fair enough. So we're good. We all okay. Can someone lay out the compromise in full now? Someone else do it. Yeah. So oh, the good. compromise in full is that we do not send people into the neutral zone, but we send stuff in to get the people on the Kobayashi Maru out. Uh, you know, we can then charge them for the services and whatnot, and uh, just kind of on the side, we build up our military so that if the Klingons try to start something over this, we're ready for them. And then we should also use the situation as a... Right. To extort them. Yes. Oh, I... Fine. That's an ugly word, but yeah. I mean, I think, that, I think that's a fair... I think that's a fair compromise. We save these people. And, you know, we would have to... I, I Blank a sense or something earlier about, like, videotaping stuff and all that. I think that would also be good to, like, have all the stuff recorded. Yeah, so we could prove it. Yeah, that's, that's good. You know, just... Equipped cameras and, and stuff. Think about it like this: if we videotape, we record that we were just going in to save people, and the Klingon trying to say you're trying to start a war with us. We could show that to all the neighboring countries and say, "Hey, look at this! We're just trying to save innocent lives." And look at the Klingons are putting mines in the neutral zone. You share a border with the Klingons. What would you do if one of your civilian ships got hit by that mine? You would you would have a good case for convincing other nations to join in with you. That's. That's fair. 
So yeah, that that's the compromise. Uh, okay. I think I think me and Noku wanted to to go more on about doing battle and stuff, but we don't need to. We don't need to. That could be a different policy that we make. Um, but yeah, I guess that that'll be a that that'll be it. That's actually pretty uh sane, I suppose. It's kind of a shorter episode then. Uh, but you know, I think if we wrap it up now, I'll be fine. Um, so once again, I am Wormy. I am Noku. I'm Seven. I am Blangus. All right, and that is this week's episode. Uh, join us next time or something. <laughs>